I was walking through like a random store and a little boy runs up to me and he just stops at Miss Tracks and just stares at me. He's like, I saw you in a movie once and I freaked out in my head because it's like I don't want to ruin this little kid's imagination. So I just I just ask him like, okay, what, what movie did you see me in? Like I, I do a lot of movies, I'm actually a movie star, I'm just like playing along with it. And then he just starts describing this movie I've never heard before. Oh yeah, you, you drove a train and you gave candy to kids and you sang a song and like I just started running through all the movies in my head I've ever seen. I'm like, was it this? No, was it this? No, 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 no. And I didn't know what to do, so I just said, yeah, like that's totally what I was in. He asked me for my <laughs> autograph, I gave it to him, he had the best day ever. I thought it was hilarious and I'm fine with it. I think it's amazing, honestly, that that happened. I am a 21 year old uh, radio and television production major and I'm a few weeks away from graduating. I also happen to be uh, an achondroplastic dwarf. What that means is I'm a dwarf first of all and the general definition for that is someone who is of smaller stature of than a normal person. It's like ranging from like two feet, three feet, four feet tall, maybe max height is like four, five, four, six. Now in that there's specific types of dwarfism. I am an achondroplastic dwarf. What that means is that I am smaller, but I also have like disproportionate like limbs. My waist or like my torso is normal size and I'm actually a little bit bigger because like my family is ironically pretty tall people. So those genes still show through. So I'm like naturally taller, but for everything else, my head is bigger and my like limbs, my arms and legs are smaller. When I was born a dwarf, it was, you know, obviously it was kind of a shock to the family, uh, being how we are, the Novik family is pretty big, pretty large people. So being given a dwarf was really interesting. My mom is actually, she's a biology major, she was, and she did her case study on dwarfism. So when I came around, she was, uh, kind of excited in a weird way. She's like, oh, I know exactly how I'm gonna raise him. I know exactly like everything about him and like I already know all this stuff and I wrote papers and you know, so it was perfect. So she knew right from the get-go, like I'm gonna raise him like this. I'm gonna raise him to be independent. I'm not gonna coddle him and I'm not going to make it so he is dependent on everyone else. And that was her mentality right from the get-go. She wanted me to adapt to the world, not the world to adapt to me. And whenever I needed something that I couldn't get because of my stature, because of my smaller hands, anything like that, I would have to try to do it three times before I was allowed to ask for help and before she would ask, actually help me. I couldn't open the refrigerator door. And whenever I'd get hungry, I'd be like, oh, I want a snack. Mom, can you open the fridge for me because I'm hungry? And she would say, no, uh, you need to do it yourself. You need to open up the fridge door by yourself. So I would try and try and try and wouldn't be able to do it. And then a few months went by, eventually a few years went by. And one day I was trying as hard as I possibly could. Then it burst open, I fell over. I looked at my mom, the most excited I've ever been. And then from that day forward, I kind of understood what she was trying to do. So ever since then, because of that kind of upbringing, that's how I try to live my life. It's like I try not to ask for help unless I know I actually need it. First day of school ever, uh, my mom called ahead and talked to the teachers about that, you know, my son is a dwarf and I want him to, you know, go to the school. And immediately they wanted to put me into the special education department. And my mom refused. She was like, absolutely not. He's going to go to kindergarten like any normal kid. The teacher arranged everyone around in a circle and we read a picture book on a little girl who was a dwarf. And then the teacher started asking questions like, does anyone know why we read it? And everyone's like, no. And then they said, because we have a dwarf in the classroom. Ever since that day, I had like a very good group of friends that were instilled at a very young age. Like, this is John. He's just like everybody else. So there's no reason to treat him any differently. And you know, every now and then outside of school, I would run into something weird. You know, like little kids without explanation, they don't really know what to think or what to say or what to do. So it's pretty frequent that I'll be walking through a Walmart or a random like store and a little kid will stop and be like, Mommy, like, why is that little boy so small? And the normal reaction to that would be like, either the mother would just turn really fast and be like, shh. It doesn't bother me because, you know, it's a, it's a little kid who's just curious. He's just asking a question. And I feel like, I don't know, he has every right to do so. It's not like he's being mean or she's being mean. It's just, you know, curiosity. The most negative come from kids who deliberately try to hurt me. In, in that sense, like they are old enough to know better and they will say like really stupid 
stuff, like just to be like cool in front of their friends and stuff like that. And I'm, you know, I'm 21 years old. I've been living this way my entire life. It's gonna take a lot for you to offend me or do something to really upset me. You know, I consider myself very, very fortunate. I consider myself very lucky for the way I was raised and the circumstances that I live my life under. And in that sense, like I try and be as nice and kind to everyone as possible. You know, I try and just don't assume anything and just talk to people as if they're people because they are people. And you know, that's what people did for me and I wouldn't have turned out the way I was. I am a resident assistant in Lefevre Hall. I am also currently a member of TBA Improv and I have a job, uh, now it's more of a job, like a part-time job at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. I make promotional videos for them about like events that they have coming up and what's going on around the farm and I'll like go out, shoot, edit together, give it to them and then they kind of give me little notes and eventually it goes up on their um, website and stuff like that. I've always liked telling stories. I think that everyone has a story to tell. I definitely believe that. I, um, I eventually want to be a documentary filmmaker slash professor. That's why I'm going to uh, grad school in the fall because I want to get eventually the credentials in order to be a college professor so I can encourage people to tell their story. So I guess, never mind, I lied. Yes, it definitely affected me. Uh, basically, don't be a dick to people. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, that's that's the basically the only thing. I can't really summarize it any other way. Maybe don't be a jerk. Don't be mean to other people. And it's like you know, treat others the way you like to be treated. Because like everybody has something to offer. Everybody has a different perspective. And just because you're taller than them, just because you're smarter than them, have a different hair color, different skin color, different anything, or are able to walk and they can't, doesn't mean that you're better than them. And doesn't mean that they don't have something to teach you. And you shouldn't be closed-minded to that. And you should have an open mind with everyone, not just people who you think have wisdom, but people who you definitely think don't. Be more open-minded to the people around you. You're making a lot bigger of an impact in their life than you think you are.